The path of progression after leaving the kind of beginner stage of drumming can be a little bit difficult for people. Like you might not know what to start training next, what to start learning next. Today, I'm gonna try and offer you five different things that you can learn once you've entered the intermediate stage of drumming. This is about that time where these will come not necessarily easy. Well, some of them will come easy. They'll be at like just the right level where you're you're ready to learn. So one is rocking the hi-hat. Rocking the hi-hat is basically just dropping the hi-hat down on beats two and four to keep time, and then leaning your heel back on beats one and three. That's why it's called rocking the hi-hat as opposed to, I guess, stepping on the hi-hat. I don't know. This is especially useful in a band setting if you want to help the rest of your bandmates keep time in their playing while you're playing anything other than a simple beat. You could say you're doing a drum fill or something. It can be kind of difficult to keep time if you don't already have a click track. So rocking the hi-hat kind of just gives them that safety net of knowing exactly when beats two and four land. For newer drummers though, rocking the hi-hat can be pretty difficult because it requires a new level of coordination. To learn how to rock the hi-hat, we're gonna start with a very simple 4-4 beat. Get to whatever speed is very slow for you. You're gonna wanna have your right hand on the hi-hat playing every eighth note, your left hand coming down on beats two and four, and then of course your bass drum on beats one and three. This should be a pretty simple beat, and once you have it down, you're gonna start rocking your hi-hat. So on beats one and three, you're gonna kick your heel down, and on beats two and four, whenever your snare is landing, rock your hi-hat forward and clamp down on it. You're gonna want that rocking motion to be very robotic. You want it to just be there, just be second nature. Now that you have this idea, just Think of whatever other drum beats you know and start messing around with the idea of rocking the hi-hat on beats two and four with that beat. To learn to rock the hi-hat during fills, I would just say play your favorite rudiments while rocking the hi-hat and get used to having the hi-hat rock on its own. Technique number two is buzz strokes. Buzz strokes are just when you drop your stick down and get just enough rebound and a double stroke to get a buzz sound. You wanna bury your stick into the snare drum and get just enough buzz where it sounds right. You don't wanna like completely dampen the sound. This is something where you just have to mess around and get a feel for it, where the buzz stroke sounds just right for your playing style. It's not crazy hard to learn, but it does add a whole new level of depth to your overall playing. They're usually used in place of ghost notes or leading into a snare, sometimes you'll play a buzz stroke. They're a very subtle difference in playing, but I think they make basic drum beats sound a lot cooler. Three is finger technique. I don't know if there's an actual name for this. I think it's just finger technique. But it's just a technique for playing with your sticks that involves only using your fingers and a little bit of your wrist to try and get as fast of a motion as possible. The way the hierarchy of drumming works is for really slow, loud hits, you're using your entire arm to hit. This is usually for like the snare drum or like for big flams maybe. But as you get quieter and faster, gradually get to using your elbows and wrists, then just your wrists, and then just your fingers. You're gonna hold your sticks like normal, but then tilt your hands to the side a little bit and just use the four fingers to bounce your stick up and down. A lot of drummers struggle with getting their hand technique up really fast, and the solution to that is just, well A, more practice, but B, to start using finger technique. I don't know if everyone really uses it. A lot of people will just use their wrists or use their elbows and try to just muscle through it when you're gonna be saving a lot of energy and you're just gonna be able to hit higher tempos if you're only using your fingers. Improvisation. At the intermediate level, learning to improvise your playing is one of the best techniques to pick up. The thing about improv though is it's really difficult to practice. It's just kind of something you pick up from playing the drums for a while. So the way I would go about doing this is just dedicate a couple of practice sessions to just messing around. Pick your favorite rudiment of choice or multiple rudiments of choice actually is, is, is that's probably better. And just mess around with what sounds they make on the drums, play them in 16th notes and 8th notes. Mess around with random pauses in between and yeah just go crazy eventually you'll come up with some kind of pattern you like and just write that down you can repeat that whenever you see fit five is ghost notes this one is very similar to buzz strokes buzz strokes are only played on the snare usually i mean you can play them anywhere else but they're traditionally only played on the snare and they provide a pretty different sound to ghost notes ghost notes are a single hit rather than a buzz and they can be played on any of the drums usually the snare similar to buzz strokes they can be used to add more sort of texture to your grooves make them sound more interesting and it's definitely worth learning to incorporate them in the beats you already know. For example, here's just a basic like beat with ghost notes. Okay, thank you, bye. 